intro, this new intro. Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 154, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. Uh, we are here with a new intro, uh, and I'm Anton. Anton Marwa. So um, that was our new intro. Um, it's funny, you see something like that, and you're like, oh, man, I look terrible. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, my camera angle that, that we've got, I'm going to have to actually go back and say, can we use a different camera, uh, images from a different camera angle? Uh, anyway, um, but I love the intro. Sorry. Uh, we. we, we um, uh, normally we are so low budget we don't even have like a legit intro, but we do now. We do, and it's a great one. <laughs> well, so Marwa, we have just five minutes, as everyone knows, uh, for our tip. But I'm going to have you describe. So this tip comes from, uh, like most many of our tips, and really our best tips, I think, come from something that we encountered uh, in the last few weeks, and that we tried to figure out. And we're going to try and boil down all the way into five minutes. So. Describe what the problem was to me. Go ahead and show your screen and let me know, you know, describe what the problem was. Yes, so I'm sharing my screen. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I want this is this is a typical page with an with an interactive report displaying different airports in different locations. So I wanted to refresh the map each time I click on um, a different record. So I do see it refreshing, but yes, and you okay. see the little marker here appearing. Yeah. If I move the map, this is the different one that I clicked on. Okay. If I move the map to a different spot and then change the zoom level and then mm -hmm. click on a different record like this, it seems like nothing is happening on the map. Oh, but you are Even refreshing the map, right? Yes, so this is the map, and this is the layer, and I'm refreshing the map using a dynamic action. So it's an on change dynamic action on the ID of that uh, airport of that feature. Okay, so when you refresh the map, it, it puts the new layer mark on, but it doesn't recenter it. Isn't there a declarative thing where you can set the initial position? Actually, there is an attribute of the map, which is the initial position and zoom and it's based on sp on spatial results but it only works the first time you logged into the application you mean that's it the very first time you go to the page if you go to the page a whole bunch of times for different records it stays with the initial position exactly oh well, that doesn't seem very helpful <laughs> it is not no um, no. Okay, so this was the problem, and and I'm going to say there was an extra wrinkle to, to the problem you were trying to solve is that you weren't doing it with, with just a point on the map, you're doing it with a polygon on the map. We'll come back to that in a little bit, but walk me through how you solved the problem. And I'm going to turn to the timer, so now we only have five minutes. We know the problem, five minutes, let's go. Okay, so um, I downloaded an application from the App Gallery, which is a simple uh, application about maps. And I found a similar page, an interactive report, and displaying uh, different coordinates on the map. So whenever I click on a different record, I get recentered with a beautiful zoom level on that point, on that airport. See, it works. And if you move that map, it, it does it, even if you move it and, and so forth? Yes. Ah, it okay. will always recenter to the correct location. Okay. So how, 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 did, how did the Apex team do this in the sample app? So we have um, the dynamic action, which is refreshing the region, the map region, so that the layer could get the correct features. So that gets the right point on the map. Okay. Exactly the right point on the map. After that, we have the JavaScript code to show the feature, to, to center on that coordinates on that point and change the zoom level. So if you see here, there is the set center and also set zoom level. And this is why it works in a beautiful way when we change from a record to another. 
Okay, so it's about 25 lines of uh, JavaScript code, not bad. So anybody that wants to do this themselves can just go download the sample app, grab this code. I, mean, I see, I, if you research this on the, on the internet, you're gonna see all kinds of people saying that that initial position is broken, it doesn't work. It's not that it doesn't work, it works, but you have to understand it means the initial position, the first time, right? Um, right. If you wanna do it after that, you have to do something like this. So you, did this just solve your problem? You just copied this in, you pasted it in, it, it just all worked? No, it did not solve my problem. This applies only to points, layer of type points. My layer was of type polygons. I was working on polygons and it did not work on polygons. Oh, so how did you solve it for a polygon? Well, I did solve that. Like this is an example page that I created to display polygons, like a construction sites. This is uh, how it works now. I solved this by using only one line code of JavaScript and the same dynamic action. So instead of refreshing, I will be um, resetting the map region. So where they had two dynamic actions, a refresh plus a um, a bunch of JavaScript code, you you changed it all to all got rid of all that and just put in one line of JavaScript code. That's it, one line which is resetting the map region and it's working. You region, you pass in the static ID dot reset. Exactly, that's, that's it. Oh well, that seems a whole lot easier. Let's see the results. So this is a construction site, the construction site number four. This is number three, a different one. Oh, it looks, oh, so it looks great. So m my question, Marwa, is why would we go and do it the way Oracle did it when we can just do this every time? We don't need to, um, we, we don't need to do all that extra JavaScript code. This is just one line of JavaScript code. Yes, I actually tried that on the first page where I had the issue on the points. And I tried to use the reset and it works, but in a little bit different way than uh, the one provided by the Oracle team. So we can try it and you can see, notice the differences. So this is using just the one line of JavaScript code instead of the 25 lines. Exactly. The reset, but on a layer of type points. Let's see, so here it's moving to the correct point, the correct position. If I click on a different record, it's going to focus also on a different point, but the zoom is not quite beautiful done. And, and you, so you have no control over the zoom if you do this. Ah, I yes. See. That's that's the issue. Well, I thought that in the um, in that declarative area, you could actually set the zoom level as well. But we tried that. If we go to the 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 set setting the zoom um, in the actual map attribute right here, um, it was at the top there, right there, um, based on spatial results. If you change that to one of the other options, it doesn't it doesn't behave on reset. This one, based on spatial results, is the only one that really behaves correctly on reset. The others don't. Um, if you do a SQL query, they, they, they do it the initial time, but they don't do it um, on, on reset. So I think this is, hello, MA software. Um, I think this is the way, if, we want, if you want to do it for a polygon, it, it actually makes sense because it zooms to the polygon. But if you're doing it for a point, I, I do like the way Oracle uh, uh, opted to do it uh, in the sample app. Um, well, that's our five minutes. We actually made it in just about almost exactly five minutes, Marwa. So um, let's do this. Let's show the reset code again, because that's not in the sample app. So let's just show what that code looks like. And so this is what you would use if you're using a polygon, you can use this. Otherwise, follow the, the example app. Is that right, Marwa? From the sample app, yes. And actually this code could be used also on a button. Uh, for example, if you have a map and you moved, but then you want to recenter, you can use that reset and you will be recentered.
Not oh, luck. I suppose you could do the same thing with um, the the Oracle code. You could put that in a button as well. I like exactly. that. I like yes. that because somebody might move the map around and they want to get back. I, I love the little recenter. Okay. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, that uh, absolutely covers our five minute tip. I have a wisdom wisdom of the week this week. Seeing as I did nothing for the tip, um, I do have a wisdom of the week. And so before I actually reveal the wisdom of the week, I recently read uh, just a, a, a little st statistic here. Um, so it's two statistics. Uh, Marwa, how many American adults, uh, what percentage of American adults do you think read at least one book a year? American adults are talking about adults. I would say 40, 30%. So about 50% of American adults read one book a year. That's great. Okay. But here's the thing. Of those adults that read one book a year, what do you think the average number of books they read is? So if they read one or more, what do you think the average number that they read is? Um, per year? Per year. Six. It's 11. So the American, the American population is broken into two groups, groups that don't read a book at all and groups that read 11 on average. 11 on average. You split, right? And so this is what I take out of this. What I take out of this is that as soon as you start reading a book, you're going to realize how good it is to read a book and you're going to want to read more. And you won't stop. Yes. And you won't stop. Right. And so, my wisdom of the week is read a book or two or 11. Yes. So that's, I will. <laughs> that, that's my wisdom of the week. I hope, uh, I hope folks like it. Um, let me know what books you read too. Um, I'm, I, I, have you read a, a, a good book recently, Marwa? No, not recently, but no. I will choose the one and share it with you. Time. So yes. I, I'll give, because we're talking books, I'll give a, a recent book um, recommendation that I have. It's called uh, Double Helix. It's written by the Nobel Prize winner that uh, one of the three folks shared the, uh, the Nobel Prize for discovering the structure of DNA. And, wow. Uh, and I, I won't give any spoilers, but I'll say, so this Nobel Prize winner wrote the book later, but he wrote it from the perspective of when the point in time he was there. So he was doing this work as like a 24-year-old. And so he gives the perspective of what he was thinking as uh, as a uh, as a research as a scientist and what he thought about other scientists. It's it's less science than it is psych well psych it's less about biology than it is about psychology to, to understand his his thought processes about his coworkers. He's it's it's almost like a soap opera. I was going to ask biology. you if the book was more about science than other things, but you already answered that. Yes, yeah. I'm curious yeah. to see. It's uh, it's it's interesting to get this perspective. Um, and then he gives an epilogue and tells about how he was wrong about what he thought about other people. I think it's it's interesting in that in that. Regard. It is. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, there we go. Um, looks like we got uh, a, uh, a link to the book as well. And um, I guess uh, there's a good chance that my statistical data might be inaccurate. <laughs> um, well, that's all I had, Marwa. Anything, uh, anything from you? Well, thank you. I will choose a book and share it with you probably, or I will read the one that you just suggested and give you my thoughts, okay? Uh, excellent. excellent. Wonderful. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. If you like the show, like the show, do all the things, tell your friends about it, write a letter to your mom. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.